Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time one of our new videos comes up. Also, if you tap on the little like button, we appreciate that too. Well, here I am still working on this bike, this ragged bike. I don't mean to insult her. This, this, she's, she's had a hard life. And all we're trying to do is get her running again and make her as dependable as possible. Now, in our last video, we put the new fiber lining, it's actually cork, uh, on here. And what I've done now is reassembled the bearing onto it, which is this is the cage, and the rollers go in from the inside. So you put a little grease on each one and they stay in place while you slide this retainer onto the hub and then put this plate on and the three little keepers. That holds it all together. Over the years a lot of people have made improvements and and marketed them and they're all improvements to the original clutch. I find when the clutch is really in good shape they're just fine and most of the improvements really are improvements though. Okay, so I'm going to put the key in here. I did dig up a new clutch hub key for it. Notice I'm using a little brass mallet to put that key in place. You don't want it to slip out when you install the hub. And I'm very lucky that this thing is in at the shaft and the keyway, the slot that the key goes in are in pretty good shape. So let me put that hub in place now, making sure that the keyway in the hub lines up with the key. And a new keeper. I think somebody commented that I didn't unbend the old keeper before I took it off. Took it off with an impact and didn't care. They aren't that expensive. So what you want to do is be sure you look in there and you can see the keyway. The easiest way to do it is get it pointing straight up, but this tab here has to go into it. So we're going to slide that into place. No big deal. There it is. I felt it right into place. And then we'll take the clutch hub nut. Now I already put a new seal in it. This is kind of a battered nut, but it's a lot nicer than the battered nut I took off of it. And I put two seals in it because the re recess in there is so deep you can actually put two seals in there. So me, I figure if one is good, two are better. And then one drop of red Loctite. That doesn't mean give it a bath of red Loctite. That means one drop. And this is a left-hand thread. And we'll put it in there. This is a deep socket for putting that in there. Let me grab a ratchet here. That is kind of a battered nut. And I don't think anyone really wants to listen to the compressor. So we'll just turn it off. That nut is going in real nice. And we'll just hit it with an impact here in a minute. But I'm noticing that the lock tab is still bottomed in there very nicely. Ordinarily, you can put this on by hand, but this nut is not that nice. There we go. Now what we'll do is make some noise with this old rattle can, or rattle uh, gun. I think I'll need the socket.
making sure that I've got it set. And there it is. Okay, now, now that that is in there and it bottomed real nice, we're going to bend one of those tabs over. Very carefully. And there it is. That is now locked in place. See, it's nice and flat in there. Okay. Now that that's done, we can go on to the clutch basket. Now this is the basket I took out of here. I washed it all up, and I'm afraid it's seen better days. Everything about it is loose, battered. And so, I have a better used one here that we're going to use. It too is battered but everything in it is still tight and everything still fits well and that's what we're going to use. Now I've already put the key back here in the crank in the uh, output shaft and so with a good used chain on here and a good used basket we're going to put it back together. Actually, I think we are. And there it is in place. Not bad. Now, somewhere here, I have the nut for the motor sprocket. Now, the motor sprocket, this thing originally came with, I'm sure, a compensator. And I happen to have one. You don't see them very often, so I thought I'd get it out and show it. But this is an original compensator off one I took off years ago off somebody's bike. I think I put a belt drive on his bike and I took this off. And he let me keep it. I just think it's a neat piece to look at. Uh, the factory made them in 22 and 23 tooth. And everybody wanted a 24 tooth motor sprocket to gear them a little higher. So that's what we have here. I just brought it out to show. That was the, the show and tell for the day. Okay, now we're going to put one drop of red Loctite on this. On this nut. And then we'll put it on. Now it is a regular right hand thread whereas the transmission main shaft is a left-hand thread. So we want to go forward on this thing. And there it is. Well, now we've mounted the, uh, the, the primary chain, sprocket, basket, so I cleaned up a bunch of old worn out things here to go in here and that's what we're going to do. There's a fiber. Now on these steels I find it very interesting. These are really old steel plates and they're smooth and they'll work fine. What's interesting is the buffers. Most of the buffers I've ever seen, there was three of them on each plate. This is an earlier plate and there's only two. So we want to be sure and put them on. Notice that it says out on the plate. Out, out. Now installing them in here, let's get down in here if I can see. You always want to want to stagger the buffers. There's a buffer there, we'll put one here. That way when the plates get thin, they won't hit. They'll actually hit each other if you don't do that. 
And here we go. By the way, I've cleaned all those fibers and uh, the dark spots you saw was uh, a little solvent or alcohol or stuff I'm using here on the, on the lift right now. And there's another out right there. You can see the buffers going like that. Okay, this is what we call a half plate. Prior to somewhere in the 60s, that's what they used. And I just made up a stack that I think the spacing will be pretty good on it. And that's what we'll use. Let's see, here is three here, three here. And we know that'll go on just like that. I get above it so I can see it. And there it is. Okay. That being said, all we need to do now is put the nuts on it and it is installed. Now, I've got work to do on the Kickstarter and the trans, and so I'm not going to adjust it yet. We'll do our final adjustment on the primary when we're through here. But we'll just get it started here for now. starting straight. stop about there because I think I'm going to go get a better nut out of the parts room for that one. This is kind of the way this whole job has gone. This, every piece that doesn't work right gets replaced by one that does. And the threads on the stud look absolutely fine, which tells me the nut is a little questionable. So we'll get a new one of those and put it on there. And in our next video, I think what we'll be doing is getting the Kickstarter side together. And we'll be ready to go. But here we have a primary installed. We'll be having to adjust it, but there is the whole system as it's going to run. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.